we've had some examples of history and the issue with the accents and so forth, which is really interesting. But another tool that we have here is the intention. Was there an intention to somehow create the kinds of negative stereotypes, for example, that we have seen with the association of accents and ethnicity and the kinds of stories that we were able to tell once that we could inject ethnicity into the gangster genre. This is really interesting and it gets into this issue of intention. And to help build our movie analysis vocabulary, I want to introduce some interesting tools that we can use. So in film scholarship, there's something called the intentionalist approach. And an intentionalist study of a genre would focus on studying and identifying and then analyzing who was involved in making the movies. Who were the directors? Who were the screenwriters? Who were the actors? And particularly, which studios were involved in making the movies. So in the 1930s, for example, it's arguable that Warner Brothers was the reigning producer of gangster movies. And an intentionalist approach would chronicle all of the facts in these categories and come up with observations about this genre based on particular kinds of intent within a historical framework. So in other words, reigning questions would be, who were these filmmakers and what did they intend to achieve with their activities? And the more that we can answer those questions, the more we can bolt on other approaches, such as the what's sometimes called the anti-intentionalist approach. So the intentionalist approach is really not concerned with discovering meanings of films, and there's criticism about that. It's more about collecting the facts, and it's sometimes called diachronic because it is looking at history and uh, historical facts. And this is a perfectly valid and scientific way to study a genre, but it does leave one wanting more depth of understanding. To get at that depth of understanding, you can make things a lot stronger by using hermeneutics or what's sometimes called a synchronic view or even called an anti-intentionalist view because sometimes people who focus on the features that we're about to talk about, they forget to include the historical data in their analysis. So if we're going to look at film from other perspectives in order to see the meanings of what a genre can bring, we don't want to leave history behind, but we do want to be able to focus on things like aesthetics, for example. We want to look at broader and deeper aspects, and this is often called synchronic because it's not too concerned with history, uh, which again is kind of dangerous. But in this way, we want to examine some of the universal myths that may appear in the storytelling. We want to look at visual styles and how visual styles connect a particular genre to perhaps the visual styles of other genres or to even the visual styles of older storytelling or paintings. And we can make a lot of connections in terms of how a movie might be making meaning by referring to a painting or showing an image of a painting and that can help us understand how to make meaning. Now another thing that we might want to bring in is uh, cultural uh, studies. So we could look at the role of what's called patriarchal hegemony and how that some films really set up and reinforce the idea of, for example, male superiority. It's not just that it's showing images of men running around with superior powers, but maybe even including messages that cause us to accept that as a true position. Likewise, there could be racial hegemony, and films have certainly perpetuated hatred and ignorance about people who are different, who look and behave differently, uh, or simply come from another place. And when we talked about accents, that was part of that. And so we can use this as a basis for understanding how films make meaning, not only make meaning, but create forces that shape society, that shape how we think about other people in the world. Likewise, we could look at how forces of capitalism are used in storytelling in order to shape how we behave as consumers and how that we accept certain government programs and or rather not just that we accept it but that we not actively engage in criticizing it and we've talked about how that some people think about filmmakers hypnotizing audiences into accepting uh, our repression under capitalism or under de democracy and how that movies can even prevent our ability to think critically and so this may fall under some of the categories that we're talking about in this anti-intentionalist view. Now, what 
difference does all of this make if we can't bring all of this together? We need to bring together the historical facts and these cultural concerns and these critical concerns about whether or not we're being hypnotized as a well-rounded way of studying genre and movies. So if you're a university student, strive to include all of these views. If you're a budding film critic, also bring as many facts as you can into your criticism of the movies as well as any sort of social criticism. Because the people reading your writing, whether they're professors or the general public, they will love the more of these aspects that you can bring. And in this course, you have the opportunity to share your thoughts about the role of these particular aspects that we've been talking about, the historical data, the cultural data, and the interpretive data that you can bring by studying film as an art. And I'd love to see your thoughts in the Facebook group, and I can't wait to hear from you and interact with you.